like everybody, we all have a story of you know trauma or experiences we've been through. And I didn't realize for years that I'd been carrying what I call the junk in the trunk through my journey and just kept going and thinking more, more pressure, more gas, more acceleration, more speed would help get me through, through life. And until it didn't, until I fell apart and everything stopped. Um, I love to teach and, you know, if I go through something, I love to help others. So through this process of, you know, in the healing and uh, counseling and help, and I really got fascinated with the concept of like, I kept doing these things, but why? Why was I constantly following the same patterns, the same ha- habitual ways of doing things and ending up with the same result, no matter how I, difference I tried? And I realized it all came back to how I was thinking. And, you know, God revealed to me Romans 12 too, which is you have to renew your mind daily. And really, if you think of the word renew is to make it fresh, renew it, make it go back and reset it to its factory settings because God created us perfectly the way we are. But it's life and living through experiences that kind of batters and, you know, we get a little hurt and we get, you know, affected along the way. But I'd really realized that, and and I come from a, a classically trained ballet background and I'm a um, competitive figure skater so I also have that sports psychology mindset of if we're going to work on something how do we find a program or a practice or a system to do this because I'm a fixer okay I like if there's a problem I'm gonna fix it I really wanted to understand what is it that makes us take control of thoughts what is mindset what is neuroscience and how does that affect behavior right and through this process I realized there is actually a system of retraining our minds because we go to the gym right we go and we lift weights, we want to lose weight, we change our diet, we watch what we eat, but we don't have, we've never thought of a mental diet. We never think of what we're consuming that's affecting our mental health because your mental health affects your physical, your emotional, your spiritual, everything. And I didn't realize that a lot of the stuff that I kept taking in and just thinking, oh, that's just the way I think, oh, that's the way I'm always going to be, that's the way I was raised, almost like there's a never, there isn't a way of renewal, but that's a lie. And I think this is where it comes back to that story that perspective of I believe this is one piece that the church has not taught very well is the concept of renewing your mind like yeah it sounds great sounds like a great bumper to sticker but how do we do this how do we renew our mind how do we go back to what how God expected us to be and over the years I've developed um, it's been about six seven years now through this process process of coaching others and learning about this and constantly studying, I have my own signature process, which is called the Unstick Your Mind Method, hence the name of the book. And I realized there is a systematic approach to how you can retrain your brain. So just like hiring a personal trainer for your body, you wanna lose weight or you wanna gain muscle, you know you have a program that you follow, right? But you know that when you go to the gym, you're not gonna lift 100 pounds of weight, that's gonna hurt, and you're gonna do some damage. So just like we approach our physical health, our spiritual and mental health is just as, if not more important, because it does direct everything else. And this process I've developed is really about taking baby steps, celebrating small wins, and slowly building up your mental mind muscle, unlearn bad behaviors, old habits, old way, and then rewire and reprogram yourself through practice and repetition, the new ways of thinking and acting and behaving. So like if you go on a diet and you know it's no longer Ben and Jerry's for lunch, right? We're now gonna have a salad. Now it's not gonna be just for a time because everybody knows that if you, the diet only works for a while you're on it. The whole process of when God says in his word, renew your mind daily, hence the word daily, it has to be a daily lifestyle habit. So I literally have taken Romans 12 too seriously and that's my mission is to really help and train others to renew their mind, to really get back into alignment with who God made them to be, get rid of all that junk, clear it out, reprogram, reset and get us onto the right journey. And I like to use the analogy of a car, get you back in the right vehicle that's been reserviced, retired, and ready to go on your new journey for success. Just the concept of feeling like you're struggling with something mentally has had such a stigma and a shame to it. And immediately, what the first thing we think of, and especially in the world now, everyone has a label, like this disorder, this disease, you, you are not your label. And here's the good news, you are not broken. You are just a work in progress. And, and that's what really gets me fired up is that people believe this and believing that you're stuck forever is the worst thing that could do because staying stuck where you're not meant to be is more painful than doing the work of changing. But because of our fear mind and our survival mechanism that's built in us and because God is did design us to survive and thrive, we are naturally or constantly fighting our biology, but yet we're being told there's something wrong with you, you need to do this, you aren't doing that right. And this kind of shame and blame approach is not effective. It just puts people into a retraction, let's hide, I don't want to really show. 
And in, even in my personal journey, I found when I started being vulnerable and sharing like, hey, I'm a mess. Like, I ain't perfect. What you see online isn't really true. You just seen people's highlight reels. And it's like, gives people permission just to breathe and go, oh, finally, I'm not alone. Because here's the thing, people, when you're feeling stuck, it's not your fault. It's your brain putting the brakes on your potential. Because you know you want to do something and you want to try something new or you, you see the vision of the future. But it's like the self-sabotage goes in because your brain's going, oh, we're not doing that again. Last time we touched that, we burnt ourselves. So oh, can't do that again. And really what it is, it's fear. Fear, fear, fear. And fear sells, right? In the news, we talk about what bleeds, leads. And anything that can keep you in a fear-based is a control mechanism. And we know that the church hasn't really taught us how to do things. How do we walk this out? Like, I'm, I'm all great for the support of... You know, let's read the scripture and God says, renew your mind. Yay, that's cute. But let's let's take that in practical terms. And I'm a very practical person. Like you have to show me how. Like if you're going to tell me something, you're going to first of all tell, explain to me why. And then you have to show me how. Make it practical. And the good news is that neuroscience is finally catching up with the Bible. The things that we think, and this is where we have to immediately draw the line and say, if we our first response is to go, oh, that's new age, oh, that woo-woo, why do you think like that? What is the reason that you were immediately putting a label on that? Because God created everything, remember? The enemy did not create the thing. He just copies, mimics, and tries to twist what God has already used. But if we could tap into who God made us to be, so purpose is super important. And the best way to describe it is like life is a journey. You may as well enjoy the ride. And you know it's a cliche. But if you're, first of all, in the wrong car, going in the wrong direction, or even worse, without directions, going around and around in circles, you're either going to run out of gas, get stuck on the side of the road, or just end up doing nothing. And none of those are real good options. So if we think about, we have the option, and, 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 and it shows neurologically, our brain is an amazing organ. God developed us that even with, with traumatic brain injuries our body heals it heals itself but we need to give it the right input right well the best place to find me online if you're interested in learning more about the concept of neuroscience and mindset and especially from a christian world view is um you come to my website at mamikakuni.com and I have a bunch of links like you can grab a, a copy of my book the unstick your mind and it's, the subtitle is shift your mindset develop grit and break barriers it's available on amazon and all the other bookstores as well but I also have a signature 12-step uh, program based on the book called The Unstick Your Mind Method. And that is how you get training. So we do this in small cohort groups because I, having tested this process uh, for over two and a half years and taken students through it, there is using neuroscience techniques of how to actually help you break out of those barriers because it's all in well talking about it. But unless we show you how, uh, nothing changes, right? So we've developed a system in our work. I have a team of facilitators and we host groups in 12-week cohorts. So if you're interested in that, definitely come to mamikakunin.com. So make sure to follow me and subscribe on YouTube and on Instagram. I love posting, you know, daily bites on um, all things mindset. Um, yeah, so definitely connect with me there. I'd love to hear that you heard, heard me on Jen's show.